The heart of your teams. The heart of Michigan. Valley Sports Detroit. The heart of the fan. It is the color of emperors, the shade of the royal. And today, it returns to its football palace. Since 2014, no program in Division II has made its home at Ford Field more than Warren D. LaSalle. The purple-clad defending champions are back, dressed for majesty, eager for victory. We've been here, we know what it takes. But their coronation is far from certain. Enter the green-clad rangers of Forest Hills Central. It's been 28 years since they played for a championship, and today, they're eager to prove that ability can rule over pedigree. One school's reign will continue, or another's will begin. Today, on Valley Sports. It's becoming old hat, this bus trip from Warren D. LaSalle High School to Ford Field. Six trips in the last nine seasons, and the Pilots look for another title. They are the defending state champions, but they have a new opponent. Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central is here for the first time in 28 years. Will the stage be too big? We'll soon find out. High School Football on Valley Sports Detroit is presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Division two bragging rights on the line. Hi, everybody. Thanks for staying with us with my partner, the former national champion of Grand Valley, Justin Sasante. I'm Matt Shepard. In addition to your national championship, you won two state titles as a player at Catholic Central, and you won one as a coach there. How is this day different than any other day for you as a player and or a coach? Yeah, it really brings back great memories. I mean, chills, uh, not only for myself, but my family, uh, eating Thanksgiving yesterday. Just the emotion coming off such a big game in the semifinals and then all the noise that follows that game and what you have to do to prepare for a new opponent that you probably have never seen before. So all those dynamics are really important for these young men and these coaches. And this is really the biggest moment of their life and they're preparing for it. We expected to see De La Salle here. They are the defending state champions, but Forest Hills Central, maybe a little surprising. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a, uh, ignorance from the rest of the state of what goes on on the west side. And there's some great football being played over there. And I have a lot of friends, and I always hear about it, but I also went to school there. And I know the culture and the community really carries the football programs. And you have a lot of guys that can make plays on this Forest Hill Central team. And I think it's going to be a better game than a lot of people are giving credit for. You don't get to this stage without a really good quarterback. And Warren D. LaSalle has one of the best, not just in the state of Michigan, but in the entire Midwest. Yeah, Brady Drogosh is, is, is the man. Uh, three year, time, third time he's been in the state championship starting. Uh, he's committed to Cincinnati, has over 1,800 yards passing, 33 touchdowns, over 1,000 yards rushing, a true dual threat quarterback, maybe one of the best in the state or the Midwest. Uh, again, committed to Cincy, so it's not a small football program, but he is the field general and the leader and where the pilots will be looking to lead into battle today. His head coach, Dan Roan, told us he's the most gifted quarterback he has ever coached. In the meantime, we talk about the quarterback play, but you need really good defense to reach a championship game. And for De La Salle, another kid going to a power five school Morgan Moragan or Mason Moragan rather yeah Mason Moragan I mean there's not enough you can say about him almost 30 tackles for loss 15 sacks I've watched this young man play a lot in the central division some games I've been able to attend this year and he is just a terror off the edge they can stunt him they can bring him off the edge they can drop him into pass coverage he is really a game changer and their leader on defense that's going to bring the wood and make sure that defense Defense wins championships and it leads through this young man. He's the guy who puts a smile on everybody's face, practice and or game time, and he will try and put a frown on the face of Forest Hills Central because this team stumbled just a little bit last week, barely got here, but all that matters is how they got here, and they did get it done thanks to their quarterback, Mason McDonald. 
Yeah, Mason McDonald and Justin Osterhaus. Uh, it's going to be a, a two quarterback system. Justin Osterhaus being the original starter. Uh, but you see these guys really had to come up big last week in the snow against the Dexter team that a lot of people really thought were going to be here. Um, and, and now transitioning with these two great quarterbacks. And one is really a passing quarterback. You're going to see him sling the ball. He's a baseball commit. Uh, and the other one is going to be more of a running quarterback, Mason McDonald, who has a little bit more athleticism, a little more shake and shimmy, but they both complement each other and complement this offense of what's going to have to get done against this great De La Salle defense. You can tell there, Osterhaus, the better passer. McDonald, perhaps the better athlete overall. Both will play. Osterhaus is coming off a high ankle sprain, so it's interesting that he is there ready to warm up and ready to give a different look which could cause some issues for De La Salle as they try to prepare for both. Yeah, preparation for two guys is not easy, especially at a quarterback position where they're touching the ball every single time. So it does give a little bit of a curveball for a big state championship game, and I think that's exactly what Forest Hill Central wants to make De La Salle do, overwork and work for everything. We had a really good one to start today, the Division Eight state championship going to Whiteford by just six. This one expected to be just as physical, just as tough, and just as exciting. Can De La Salle repeat? or will Forest Hills Central win their first ever? The kickoff is right around the corner on Valley Sports Network. Three quarterbacks are finalists for the Mr. Football finalist award. We will see one here today, Brady Grogas quarterbacking Horn De La Salle. We'll see Mason McKenzie and Dante Moore here on Valley Sports tomorrow in their respective divisions. But this is exciting stuff. You see the criteria, not an easy criteria. You've got to be not just good, but you've got to be good in really big moments. And all these gentlemen have been just that. For Brady Drogas, this is his third state championship as a starter. Mixed bag in the first two and talked with our Devin Gardner about what he has learned from those experiences. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sophomore. Hey, so he saw he saw already. Sophomore year. In the beginning it was playing hard. He's like, oh no, we're doing this game. Drogosh will roll to the right. Off the edge, and it's intercepted. What did you remember from this day when you knew that you weren't going to come out and start the second half? Oh, I thought that J.C. should have came in. And when he came over to me, I knew that J.C. was coming to the game. He should have went in the game earlier. Yeah. I was playing terrible that game. He should have went in earlier. He I love it. I love the real, like, you're a realist. Like, hey, man, I'm not playing very well. Uh, stats weren't great and, and, you know, weren't, weren't leading the team. And then we move forward to this vastly different. Yeah. What does that feel like? That was an unreal feeling. I remember uh, when offense would go out there, I was already done for the game. I would jog down because I didn't really want to be on the cameras. So I would jog down to the other side. Well, it's a great place to be right now with all these cameras. But I was really excited. I was trying to really try to hide my excitement for the most part. I don't want to seem like that giddy kid, but this was probably the best day of my life. Justin, live and learn for a guy who's at a key position for De La Salle. Yeah, amazing that you come and get pulled in your sophomore year. You come back and you lead your team to the state championship and now have a huge target on your back. Now everybody's expecting you to do great things. Everybody's coming for you, and he's going to be a real key piece into making sure that they come home and get their back-to-back -back state championship. And I would guess everybody on that team, on that field for De La Salle, is comfortable because Drogosh has been there, done that type of situation. And again, when a quarterback is touching the ball every single time, that's exactly what you want. You want experience. You want a field general that has some savvy and has some poise and that's exactly what Brady Drogosh has. Yeah he's been incredible all season long. 32 and 5 as an all-time starter. His last start for De La Salle before he heads to Cincinnati. Before the kickoff our national anthem.
Tim Rogers and Forest Hills Central are undefeated. How do they stay that way? They need to prepare and they need to get fired up. The coach to his team before the kickoff today. Game 14, that's what it is. It's game 14. The sun's going to come up tomorrow regardless of the outcome of this game. It's not too big. Just go play and have fun. You'll regret things if you don't enjoy it today. Go out there and play and have fun. If you make a mistake, do it going 100 miles an hour. Don't let this get too big. Two, you said, we got to do our 111. Everybody does their part. You do your 111 on the team, the offense, defense, special teams, they all do their part. Nobody lets the other group down. We all do our part. But one eleventh at a time. You get yourselves in trouble when you start to do more than that. Stay within yourself. The last part of it, which is the reason right now you're playing in the state championship, is you said we got to be the most physical team every game day. That's the reason that you're here today, is we're the most physical team. You got to fly around, you got to hit people today. You got to get 11 people to the ball. You got to block people down the field. Okay? We got to be the most physical. We control that. That's us. I can't control how tall you are, how wide you are, how much you weigh, but you guys can control who's going to be the most physical team. I'm going to tell you what. You're going to it's interesting because Tim Rogers told us that last year after talking to his kids, they said to him, sometimes you made it too big. You talk about the big picture instead of taking it one week at a time. He learned from his kids. And he says, you know what? If you don't learn from your kids, shame on you. He tried to keep them in the moment, and it's a big reason for their success this year. Yeah, I had a great conversation with Tim, uh, Coach Rogers, earlier this week, and he, he really expressed those sentiments exactly. Uh, it's great that you can grow as a coach and not only impacting young men, but getting them to this point that they're going to remember the rest of their life. Dan Roan, who led West Catholic to D5 titles a number of times and is a state champion trying to repeat. His team will receive the kickoff to start. Damian King with a good head of steam. Look out. And he is ankle tackled at the 35 yard line. Sets up his offense in pretty good shape. Led by Brady Drogosh. He's worth talking about throughout. We'll head to Cincinnati. We'll graduate in January and head to Cincinnati and get ready for that Bearcats program as quickly as possible. Not just a phenomenal quarterback wearing 12 and white, but also a four point GPA. Uh, Brady Jogosh, just the, the, the prototypical quarterback you want to see as far as size, 6'4", 250, but can really do it with his legs. And when you have that much production, <laughs> over 40 touchdowns, you know, close on a 50, it's amazing feat. Empty set for Drogosh on the very first play of this championship Friday. And already a flag because he took too much time. That ball, delay a game, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Well, Shep, it just proves that no matter how many times you've been here, there's always still some nerves. You know, it's always the big show. Need that first snap to get out of the way. Even Dan Rohn would admit, even though he's been here numerous times. Drogosh wants to throw and does on a curl route. He's got his man inside the numbers to about the 43-yard line. That's Damian King. A pickup of 12. Offensive line averages 6'2", 264 pounds. Dante Pancato leads the way, the left guard. Drogosh will keep it this time. He's got room. And pushed out of bounds close to the 30-yard line of Forest Hill Central by Ty Hutkins. De La Salle looses him up. First play of the game with the double slot, throws the ball, but then they get a pull with the QB lead here, just outside zone, basically, and he's going to get around, and you're using, seeing his speed and long stride, very decisive, and, and it's getting them good yardage, just big chunks. they got to slow him down here really quickly. They cannot let him pick up the steam. A pickup at 25. We'll throw it again. On a curl route, it's caught again. Close to another first down, Jack Janacek. 
on the reception. Here's the defense for Forest Hills Central. Up front, winning Sutherland. He's on the state championship lacrosse team a year ago, next to Crandall Quinn, who is a disruptive force for certain. Flag. Dead ball. False start. Offense, number 74. Five yard penalty. Replay. Second down. Couple of penalties on the drive, but it sure hasn't hurt Brady Drogosh and the Pilots' offense. Four wide receivers set for him. Thrown for over 7,800 yards in his career. First running play, Rhett Rozier inside the 20. A pickup of nine. You don't like to get behind the sticks. You don't like penalties, but De La Salle moves on quickly, don't they? Yeah, you see that they're motioning to see what Forest Hill Central is going to get into. Are they going to roll an extra guy in the box? Are going to stay back in the zone? It actually worked out really well for them. Drogosh, quick slant with some room inside the five and down to the two-yard line. Nice pitch and catch and a quick one for Josh White. Yeah, Sharon Sutton's just done it all year for them. Big playmaker comes back there like a bubble, then comes, brings it back in like a rocket screen and just gets across the defense of what happens. Everybody's flowing. A big play. Touchdown, Brady Drogosh. And the Pilots move quickly. Well, Chef, we're trying to keep up with the pace. I mean, they came out here with a very intent to say we're going to push on Forest Hill Central, make them react quickly, and right there with the power, QB power for a big touchdown for Brady Drogosh. Boy, they do everything well, don't they? Landon Risco will come on to try for the extra point. Drogosh did it with his arm. He did it with his feet. And the defending state champions march down the field quickly. They do it in six plays in a little bit more than two minutes to strike first. Big play, part of it, Sharon Sutton on the quick screen here on the slam. Yeah, I love this play set up. You get everybody action to the bubble, but he actually puts his foot in the ground and comes back and all of the defense was over pursuing. Got him back down here for a really quick power, QB power, just straight downhill. De La Salle enforcing the line of scrimmage and their physicality on first drive of the game. Drogosh rewriting all kinds of record books at De La Salle. That is now 47 career rushing touchdowns for the pilot quarterback. In addition to that, he has 56 passing touchdowns. Those are monster numbers here's the scoring drive and they did it efficiently and they mixed it up a little bit both on the ground and through the air at six plays from the tank Hutkins close to the 30-yard line. And that's where this Forest Hills Central offense will try and take control. Justin Osterhaus will start at quarterback. Mason McDonald, you will see at some point, number nine, but number eight will start it. He can spin it over 1,000 yards, and that flexes Mason McDonald, the backup quarterback, split wide to the right. Hutkins in motion on the ground. That's T.J. Hartman lunging to the 34-yard line. Hartman leads this team in rushing, almost 1,200 yards. If 
Justin talked about it at the very outset of the broadcast. Osterhaus, the better thrower, over 1,000 yards, completing 61% of his passes. Recovering from a high ankle sprain that he hurt against Mona Shores in the district finals. Brings McDonald in motion. Gives it to him, but there's nowhere to go. Good crashing defense led by James McDonald, their physical leader from the linebacker spot. D. LaSalle up front, 6'1", 231. Mason Moragan is the stud. He's an Anvil Award finalist given to one of the better defensive players in the entire state of Michigan. Griffin Phillips leads the team in interceptions with four. It's a third down and long. You have an isolation up there at the top. Want to maybe go in there. You don't have a lot of safety help over top. Maybe try to take a chance here. And trips to the short side of the field. Osterhaus. No, it's McDonald looking that way. Scrambling. Weaving. Eyes still downfield. Throws on the run, and it is incomplete. Broken up nicely by De La Salle's Jamari Allen. Really good job by Jamari Allen. Uh, Osterhaus never really goes back to that one-on-one -on -one at the top of the screen, so he doesn't get his eyes around, tries to make a play. Have to be careful what you're trying to force in the state championship. Live to play another down, live to play another series. Gets away with one right there, and we got a punted situation. Osterhaus trying to get it to McDonald. They tried a quarterback-to-quarterback -quarterback type situation. Didn't pay off for him. Andrew Nove will punt it away. Sutton watches it bounce a couple of times. And it will wobble down to the 38-yard line. Warren De La Salle, the defending state champs, already on the board on their first offensive possession. They will try and duplicate that effort when we return to forward field. It is 7-0, De La Salle, the defending champs. Uh, replay reviews will occur automatically on scoring plays or potential scoring plays, turnovers or potential turnovers as well there is a little bit of a wrinkle now head coaches will be permitted to challenge calls they'll be entitled to one challenge during regulation first request and granted a timeout so to initiate the challenge the head coach has to first request it then be granted a timeout if the call is overturned then the timeout will not be counted against the team that did that so yeah, and it, MHSA made the right move here, uh, evolving these rules because you get here and you put all this work in. You don't want to have it messed up uh, by the wrong call, uh, losing a state championship game for somebody. Brady Drogosh and the Pilots work quickly, 64 yards in a couple minutes to get on the board first on their first possession. They've got it again. Two receivers to each side for Drogosh. And Sutton in motion gives it to him. He's got some wiggle, bounces outside. Still on his feet. And driven out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. It's Andrew White, or Aaron White rather, the senior with the carry. Yeah, so what, what De La Salle is doing, it's a check with me. They're getting it lined up. They're seeing if Forest Hill Central is going to adapt. They're not getting that extra safety in the box. They're keeping the two safeties back, and that's why you're getting a lot of the jet sweep and you're getting a lot of the edge getting attacked by De La Salle. Again on the ground, trying to bounce it outside. Rhett Rozier now sneaks it inside. First down, running more. Into Forest Hill Central territory. Brady Trucci on the tackle. You see 63 right here. Big boy's going to get pulling here. Go ahead and clear it. And then you get another tight end in there to really outnumber the box, and you get a good counter pull for a good first down gain. Rozier again. Nothing doing. A tackle for loss because of the penetration up front. Led by Crandall Quinn. The lone senior on that defensive front. Yeah, big 55. You see him on film. He's physical. He's very quick with his hands. He's the lacrosse goalie. He's going to be going to college to play that. But he has to cause that disruption and slow down this De, De La Salle offense. It's a loss of two. Drogosh off play action will keep it himself. He's got a lane. He broke a tackle. He's inside the 30 and carries a man to the 26. Three. 
see a great job by this right tackle right now. He's frozen right here. Go ahead and oh, go ahead and run it. Yeah, go ahead and run it. And you just see him pull through and just get a great seal block there. You know, Brady Drogosh has that athleticism to now bounce it outside and really hurting him with some big chunk plays. Rushed for over 4,600 yards in his career. He'll roll the pocket, looking downfield. Got away. Now dumps it off. Rozier maneuvering his way. Look at him bulldoze his way inside the 15. You see the great athleticism by Drogosh just right here avoiding the sack. You have to make these plays in state championship games. Not only does defense win championships, but when you have an offense that's pacing like this and starting to really gain some significant momentum, you have to get that play. Great job by Drogosh, uh, at, you know, really making a, a makeshift play. First and 10, he'll keep it himself to the 10-yard line. Helps to be 6'4", 215 pounds. Tough to bring him down, and then he's got that long reach. Really gives you everything you need as a quarterback. Empty set for him on a second and six. Looking left, now scrambling. He's got a lane. Looking for the end zone. He'll come up short, but he'll get the first down. Jacob Harleton pushed him out of bounds. Should be first and goal for De La Salle. A really good job by De La Salle's coaching staff putting a lot of pressure on Forest Hill's central defense in the red zone. You put an empty set, you know they're going to have to man up, take away the inside, and you give your running quarterback some great lanes to get a, a, a really easy run there down to the goal line. Touchdown, Pilots, Rhett Rozier. Tenth rushing touchdown of the season, and De La Salle has had it twice and scored twice. Yeah, Rhett Rozier plays in one of the most physical divisions in the state in the Central Division, and he is just a bulldozer. He just gets downhill, and you're not going to stop him. You see Crandall Quinn in there get in late, but you really need those linebackers to fill, and you really need to pack it in tight when you have that type of formation from De La Salle. Good job, De La Salle, again, uh, just really putting the foot on the gas and putting up 14 quick points here. Extra point is good, and De La Salle knows what to do with the football when they get it. 62 yards on eight plays. Needed three minutes this time, and it's paid off by the bulldozing junior, Brett Rozier. Dan Rohn knows what it takes to win. He won four state championships at West Catholic, won a title a year ago with De La Salle, but his players do as well. We showed you earlier in the broadcast of just how often they have been here six times in the last nine years. A lot of these guys, Justin, have played now 20 more games, 15 to 20 more games than their opponents because they play so late in the season. That has to be a huge help. Oh, iron sharpens iron, and when you get that type of experience against the quality uh, opponents that De La Salle has, it really does uh, prepare them for big moments like this, and you can see that it's paying off. Already breaking down film. They're doing it on the big screen, not the iPad. Forest Hill Central has to find some type of response with offense. They need to control the clock. They need to hold on to the football and take care of it. You hope that they can respond here. They've gotten this far, put up a great fight here against De La Salle. Cody Cummins will kick it off for De La Salle. Ty Hudkins, Roman Brummel are back deep. And Brummel can't get the chance to bring it out. It's a short bus trip for Warren De La Salle. We know that. Forest Hills Central on the west side of the state. One of three high schools in the district with Ada Township, established back in 1958. Their offense needs to kick it in gear here. 
already down 14. Justin Osterhaus, the senior. Catch along the sideline by his tight end, Samuel Snyder. Yeah, great catch, but even a, a better throw. Just recognizing he's open right now. They load the boundary side, so they have numbers there, and they leak out the tight end and able to get a really big play and some momentum here that they much, very much needed. Picked up 25, lofted it over the outstretched arm of De La Salle linebacker Peyton Babbage. The give to Hartman. Broke a tackle. Might have gained one. De La Salle does a really good job bottling up the run game. You're getting that motion from those halfbacks to really act as an extra lineman, and they're just being so physical in the gaps that you really can't get any space. If you try to bounce it on this De La Salle defense, it's going to be very difficult with the type of defensive ends they have. Osterhaus fakes the toss, now throws on the run and incomplete. Intended for Snyder again. That brings up third down and long. Really good job by the defensive backs at De La Salle, not getting their eyes caught in the back, not getting their eyes caught in the backfield and really just doing their job. You have some false motion there, uh, some fakes to the pitch, coming back, seeing looks like looks like an option, then pulls out and passes and does a really good job of coverage there for the secondary. Throwing situation for Justin Osterhaus. Tried to set up the screen, hit as he throws and it's intercepted. Inside the 40, and Babich pushed out of bounds into the De La Salle sideline, but the first turnover of the game, De La Salle forcing the pressure and then the pick. Yeah, Peyton Babbage really does a good job of getting here. Pressure, they bring a blitz late. You have big uh, Mason Moragan coming off the end. You're just starting to feel number 21 gets the pick. 88, Mason Moragan, we talked about him. Almost 30 tackles for loss, 15 sacks. He gets home, makes a big difference in the game early, forcing that interception to Peyton Babbage. Osterhaus never saw it coming from the backside. And now De La Salle will try and cash in yet again. They have run 14 plays, six of those 10 yards or more. Joe Gosh will throw, clean pocket, big arm, downfield, touchdown, Pilots! What a throw to Jack Janicek. Well, Jack Janicek, he sees that he's in a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. Comes across the formation, almost in a skinny post, staying away from that safety, and Brady Drogosh does what Dra Brady Drogosh does and just puts it on a dime, puts it right over the safety, touchdown, De La Salle. Perfectly thrown football. The extra point is academic. Drogash ran for the first touchdown of the day, now throws for the third touchdown for De La Salle. Yeah, and they bring a, a, a deep drag route right in front of Ty Huckins for Forest Hill Central just to make him step up a little bit, and that opens the skinny post from behind, and Brady Drogash knew as soon as that safety took a step towards that deep drag, he was gonna let it go and puts it on a dime for a big touchdown. 
Warren De LaSalle has their foot on the gas. And how about the time that Drogosh had to throw the football because of the big nasties up front? Yeah, and if you're Forest Hill Central, you're going to have to just take a big breath. You have to get back in this game one play at a time, and you have to start forcing De LaSalle to get out of a get in a three and out, and also you need to put points on the board. So there's a lot there. Uh, you're in the state championship the first time in 28 years, uh, but you have to take a big breath and re recoup because uh, this could be a really long day if you don't. Yeah, it can get away from you quickly when you're taking on a team with this type of skill, this type of manpower. And even though it's just the first quarter and there's three and a half remaining in it, you hate to use certain cliches, but you really feel like Forest Hill Central gets the football. They're in a must-score situation already in the first, down yeah, 21. I, I agree, Shep. I, you, you have to get some momentum back or this could uh, get really ugly. And, 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 I, and I think they have the talent to do it. They just have to go back to the drawing board, see what De La Salle's been stopping, and try to counterpunch that. Hudkins from his five. And drag down shy of the 25. Forest Hill Central, 13-0, a school record 13 knockouts. Here was the send-off from the fire department in the area, getting all kinds of people standing on the side of the road with signs and murals and well wishes. Van came along with them and hoping to extend this a little bit. Down 21 as quickly as you can say the word football. Mason McDonald is at the trigger for Forest Hill Central. Tried a quarterback draw, but nothing was there. You could hear the sideline of De La Salle say, quarterback run. In other words, he's the running quarterback compared to Osterhaus, who started the first two series, who likes to throw it. Right, and some of the motion out of the backfield will also indicate that Forest Hill Central is going to want to run that quarterback. They're really trying to widen out the linebackers with that running back motion. I think that they have a good matchup up there with Ty Hudkins. He's a really good athlete, a junior in the slot. You have the safety playing off. I'd like to see him go back to that and try to exploit that a little bit with him playing 10 yards off a of tie. McDonald's will throw. Hutkins, you called it, Justin. They had him. He connects. His forward progress was to the 29 before he was pushed backward. This is not a knock on Justin Osterhaus, by the way, the starting quarterback. Number eight in green on the sideline now. This is just the way Forest Hill Central plays. The third series is the series in which Mason McDonald gets anyway. Yeah, and I don't think it's a bad strategy because if you know you're gonna play them both at some point, you don't want one coming in cold turkey. <laughs> On a third and long. McDonald slings it out and it hit the back of the defender and incomplete. Griffin Phillips with good coverage. He wanted Ty Hudkins instead It'll be fourth down. And that's misfortune for uh, Forest Hill Central because Ty Huckins had a step. He definitely did. As a quarterback, though, when you have the big pressure, especially guys like Mason Moragan and, and some of those uh, D tackles, Max Tharmas and uh, Chris Pagno, uh, Pagano, uh, coming in your face, it's hard to really step into your throw. And that's exactly what you saw him not do and why he hit the back of the defender. Andrew Nove will punt it away. Sharon Sutton is back to receive it. An end over end kick that is returnable. This way. This way. Still alive. Flag on the plate on the sideline. Nice move, touchdown, but will it stand? By that look, a dejected look from Sharon Sutton, you would guess it's coming back. During the return, personal foul, face mask, number 19, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the flag, first down. Now, 
I didn't expect that it was going to be a face mask that brought this back, but what a tremendous run by Sharon Sutton, uh, just being an athlete, uh, making things happen on special teams, and you hope that Forest Hill Central can find some action on special teams as well. They're going to have to win a couple different phases of the game that they may not be usually focused on. Uh, De La Salle, you might probably want to start kicking away from that young man uh, the rest of the game. It's not the first in-game adversity that Dan Roan's team has faced. The very first play, before they even snapped the ball, they took a delay of game penalty. But it sure hasn't hurt him. Three scoring drives so far for De La Salle. On the end around. And into Forest Hills Central Territory, Tristan Nichols with a good run. And look, I understand the respect that you have for De La Salle's uh, passing game, but you have to stop the run first. You have to rotate another safety into the box. You cannot let those jet outsides uh, get that much yardage on first down. Another big play for De La Salle's offense. Drogosh swings it out. Not bad on first down. Damian King, the freshman, on the receiving end of that toss. Just a freshman, and yet he's out there. And Dan Rohn said, very trustworthy receiver. You'll notice that De La Salle, uh, alongside Dan Rohn and, and behind Dan Rohn, you'll see about 200 kids who are dressed. They literally took up about 80 yards of field during the national anthem. Very important because he wants them all to feel what it's like to play in a state championship atmosphere. Drogas wants to throw again. Steps into it. Down the middle of the field and incomplete. Intended for Sharon Sutton. A four. Forest Hill Central is really trying to keep everything in front of them. There's that sideline we were talking about. I mean, literally from the goal line during the national anthem, from the goal line down to the 15-yard line or so. Guys were spread out. It's amazing. It's so important to the success of his program. Big third down here. I keep it in Brady Drogosh's hands. They will. And he'll reward him. Tough run to the 32. How do you defend this kid, Preston? There's a couple things that you just have to do, and, and it can't wait till halftime to make the adjustment. Forest Hill Central has to get another guy in the box. You have to spy the quarterback, and that will also get, help you defend any edge runs or powers. If they just are sitting back too far, and they're giving too much room, and you're yeah. getting hat on hat there up front, it's not working out for the defensive line of Forest Hill Central right now. Throw gosh will throw. Connects again. Tristan Nichols on his second catch of the day to the 21 yard line of Forest Hill Central. The score looks like it could be a halftime score. Instead, it's just the end of one. De La Salle has had it three times. They have run 15 plays and scored three touchdowns. One of the finalists for Mr. Football, Brady Drogosh, has been right in the middle of it. 21 0 De La Salle with a second quarter upcoming. This is the third straight finals appearance for De La Salle. Last year they won it all, beating Traverse City Central. They lost to Mona Shores in 2020, but Brady Drogosh learned a lesson from that setback and came back with a vengeance to beat Traverse City Central in a runaway. Drogash also has another title under his belt. It's the basketball championships. This is from the Breslin Center on our air a year ago. They are the defending state champions in this sport as well. Winning it in East Lansing. And Drogash right there, number 12, fired up. He won't get a chance to play basketball for De La Salle this year because he is graduating early and heading to Cincinnati. Trying to get acclimated as quickly as possible to college life. He will play for Luke Fickle and the Bearcats next year. Dan Rohn will be sorry to lose him. Calling him the most gifted quarterback he has ever had. He's had some good ones. 
really good ones. First play of the second quarter. Sutton on an edge run, got to the 21 before getting pushed back. Yeah, really good job there by Forest Hill Central, not only uh, sealing the edge, but everybody running inside out to the football does a really good job, and they need to really have a great backbone here on defense uh, and, and stand up uh, to stop De La Salle from getting another six to seven points. Second and 10. Hey, if nothing else, to get that defense off the field, right? They have logged a ton of time. And that wears on you a little bit. Joe Gosh looking right, throwing. That's completed. That's a first down catch. And sneaking inside the 10 is Damian King, the four. Yeah, really good job by the De La Salle uh, uh, offensive staff. They're, they're just simply seeing that when they get a check with me, which means Brady Drogosh comes up with the original play, looks at the sideline, they're saying, hey, we have a defensive back that's sitting eight to 10 yards off. We're gonna throw right there, either a short out hitch, whatever it may be. And they're just taking what Forest Hill Central is giving them. And right now, Forest Hill Central cannot afford that. They need to come up and press, especially in this red zone. What they gave them was thir thir 13 yards and a first and goal. From the eight. Pass to hurry. It'll be Drogosh trying to keep it. Took a big hit, but that's a big body to try and bring down. Raymond Cargill in on the tackle. Number 33 in the middle in green. Doing a nice job filling the hole. Yeah, him and Crandall Quinn have been really the heart and soul of this defense all year for this undefeated team and does a really good job there, Ryan Cargill, from running inside out and getting to the quarterback. And you always see Crandall Quinn around the football at all times. He's a deep tackle, has an extremely high motor. Look for a fade down at the bottom here. Quarterback keeper. Drogosh down to the two-yard line before getting pushed back by Ty Hudkins. And that's what you want to see from Forest Hill Central defense. You want to see their safeties. Now, obviously, being in the red zone, it's going to happen naturally. Get down in the box and be part of that run stop. They're going to hurry it up. Drogosh will keep it again, looking for the edge. Lowers the shoulder, and he's in for the score. called power football right here. Yeah, this is just a simple QB lead. You have Rhett Roser up there leading the block. Uh, kind of misses it, but Grady Drogosh has enough savvy to get outside, takes three guys into the end zone. And now Forest Hill Central looking to be down 28 nothing if they make this extra point. That's a quarterback getting on the squat rack, doing some lunges, <laughs> right? Driving the legs. is up and the extra point is good. It's been a busy offensive day for Brady Drogosh and company. Always wanting more. He's got a couple of touchdown runs and a touchdown toss. And it's all De La Salle early on. Hey, stay with us tonight on Valley Sports Detroit. Two teams battling against teams from the state of Arizona. First up, the Red Wings host the Coyotes with coverage from Little Caesars Arena beginning at 7.30 on Valley Sports Detroit, and the Wings are red high. And then starting at 8.30, the Pistons battle the Phoenix Suns out west. You can find that game on Valley Sports Detroit Extra, and as always, both streaming on the Valley Sports app. Pistons, I believe, finishing up that West Coast trip. And trying to come home, feeling good, after getting a win the other day. Speaking of feeling good, Dan Rohn, Brady Drogosh have to feel very good right now. No coach, no player feels like it's over this early, but they have yet to be stopped, and they have imposed their strength and their power yeah. on Forest Hill Central so far. Forest Hill Central needs to get one on special teams. They need to get a turnover. They need to get a stop, but they need to get one on special teams, and they have the guys to do it with uh, Brummel back there. Huckins. Cummins with a big leg. 
And that ball will come out to the 20. Well, Forest Hills Central is one of three high schools in their district. They have won five state championships in lacrosse, two in golf, a couple in soccer, one in skiing, and five in tennis. Last year fell to Mona Shores in the pre-districts. This year had a little revenge against Mona Shores in the district finals, then beat East Lansing and Dexter to get here. Justin Osterhaus, Osterhaus rather, the quarterback, the senior quarterback, back in. Down the middle of the field, incomplete. De La Salle does a really good job of moving linemen and blitzing at the last second. They're not showing it, so it's very hard, especially for high school football players. Uh, they were max protect at the time for still central meeting, and they had a running back back there to help out, and that's why he was able to get that ball off. But they have to be able to hold on that ball for another second, second and a half, so he can step into his throw there, Justin Osterhaus, and get that ball off with some accuracy. It is tough to do that when Mason Moragan is bringing the pressure from the edge for De La Salle, wearing 88 in white on the ground Hartman stops and starts again lost a yard Moragan as we mentioned we've, been, we've talked a lot about Brady Drogosh for good reason but Moragan he's a 3.9 GPA National Honor Society member and for a big kid at 6'3", 240, and he's all over the field, and will be playing at Illinois next year, he runs a 4.7540. He gets after it. So Brett Bielen has got a good one coming to Champaign-Urbana. Down the near sideline for Hudkins, but too far for him. Pretty good coverage by Jamari Allen. And here's the Anvil Award finalists. Justin Mason Moragan among those who might win it. Jalen Thompson is a heck of a player, too. Yeah. What is the Anvil Award for our audience? Oh, it's, it's the defensive player, the, the rugged jug, we used to call it, or the Iron Man, somebody who uh, not only plays uh, uh, great in the trenches or in the box, linebackers, d linemen, and O-linemen, uh, but that is very physical and really leads their team. And, and defense wins championships, and Mason Moragan has been leading his team all year, and uh, you can see why he's such a force off the edge. Best linebacker or lineman by our friends at State Champs. Good field position for De La Salle, for sure. Down to the 35-yard line goes Sharon Sutton. Three three and outs for Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central. Not exactly what Tim Rogers and company had in mind. So that gives the ball back to Brady Drogosh, perhaps the most dangerous man in the entire tournament. Now a message from family, heating, cooling, and electric. For over 50 years, your family has trusted Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Call Family Heating and Cooling now for all of your family's heating and cooling needs. Visit FamilyHeating.com today. Joe Gosh, total yards today already. Almost 200 by himself. Two rushing touchdowns and a throwing score as well. Handles the high snap. Steps up. Flag on the play. Still looking. Spinning. Throwing and incomplete. Nearly intercepted. But this could be a hold against De La Salle. Yeah, very evident hold there on number 55, Quinn Crandall. We knew he was going to give De La Salle a little bit of fits. What I think is happening, though, you got five linemen there for De La Salle. You have four defensive linemen rushing. You need to give them another extra man or two in the box so that you can free up uh, Crandall Quinn and, and, and make sure that he has some ability to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. And you see he wins that one there and gets help. So that will push De La Salle back a little bit. And that's when you know that Forest Hill Central is doing pretty well. When, when we're talking about Crandall Quinn quite a bit, and he's an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman, but Coach Rogers says that he is the best player on his team. You don't find that very often from an interior lineman. 
when he gets that label. That's saying something about his athleticism. Drogosh will keep it. Boy, very, very patient quarterback as he sneaks his way inside the 45 of Forest Hill Central. Just kind of lets the play happen. We always hear that phrase in all the sports. The game slows down. It sure looks like it slowed down for Braden Drogon. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and to give some credit there, Ray, Raymond Cargill from uh, middle linebacker number 33 from Forest Hill Central did a really good job of flowing outside and cutting back in to stop a really uh, potential bigger run there from Braden. This is second down and 18 now. What we've noted quickly from D. LaSalle, if you haven't seen him all year, they do not feel any pressure in these types of long situations because you got that guy. He slings it on a dart. That was a frozen rope, and it's inside the 20, a first down. What a pitch and catch to the freshman, Damian King. He's been big in the first half so far. Yeah, again, you just see him scour the field. He's working. He knows exactly where he's going right now. Damian King's had two touchdowns against River Rouge. Really talented freshman. Uh, has some family ties there with Austin Brown, another great football player played in the state of Michigan. Picked up 26. He's on the receiving end of this pass as well and gets close to another first down. And as an offensive coordinator, you are just going to continue to take what they give you, sure. and there's just not enough press, and there's not enough pressure. You have to press with the secondary. You have to have the linebackers be physical and not let wide receivers get free, and you have to bring some pressure, or De La Salle's going to sit back like seven on seven and keep slinging the ball. Drogas looks like he is in complete control. Lobs it for the corner. Caught! Touchdown, De La Salle. Tristan Nichols. Playing with a torn ACL, Tristan Nichols, unbelievable uh, adversity this young man's work through. You see the matchup. Uh, Brady Drogosh has a great confidence in him, bigger receiver on a smaller corner. That corner has to really get into the back, back uh, pocket there and squeeze phase, get in phase and squeeze him out and just isn't able to do that with a bigger body with Tristan Nichols. And he gets a big touchdown his senior year playing on a torn ACL. Uh, won a lot of heart from that young man. He will have surgery on Monday. That's right. In just three days, he will have surgery on the knee. And hauls in a touchdown pass. What a capper of a senior season he has had. Extra point is up and through. And De La Salle continues to impress. You know, in baseball, we call it crooked numbers. In football, you call it a route. Brady Drogosh. Two rushing scores, two passing scores. It's 35 zip. The defending champions in control. Now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford. Dude. What a display by the defending state champs. The special presentation of the MHSA football finals on Valley Sports Detroit is presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. 35 nothing. Warren D. LaSalle leads Forest Hills Central. They've scored every time they've had the football. Crandall Quinn is perhaps the best player on this Forest Hill Central team. He is their best athlete, too. They won the state championship in lacrosse a year ago. These young boys went 21-0. One of seven players who played on that lacrosse state championship to play on this football team. So that means at 13-0 this year, 21-0 during lacrosse, they are an impressive 34 and 0 coming into play here today and Crandall Quinn will take his lacrosse talents to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. He is the goalie who can play and play outside the crease as well. And what a great athlete he is. Shep, I've been on this side as a football coach, uh, losing big in a state championship. It, it is not a good feeling. <laughs> it's, uh, it's setting you up for months of depression. So uh, what, do you, what do you say to your team, though? How do you keep them engaged with six and a half left in the opening half and you're down, you know, five touchdowns? And it's a great question. And, and what you tell them is, is it's a new half. We have to put the score behind us. We just have to play the second half as the best second half of our lives and let, let the cards play as they, as they, as they will. Uh, but you have to keep that up for not only the, call, the team and, and their morale today, but also the culture of the program in years to come. Yeah, they look shell-shocked a little bit. Short kick. Fielded by Hudkins. Looking for a block. Can't find one. Wrestled down at the 21-yard line. 
Well, 35 is a steep, steep climb for any team, right? But there is a running clock in high school. If a team is ahead by 35 points or more during the second half, the clock will run continuously, except for a timeout, an injury, an administrator penalty, or after a score. So it's not going to happen in the first half. But in the second half, if that's the way it is, then you will see that running clock. Justin Osterhaus stays in at quarterback out of the pistol formation. Brings McDonald in motion. And will run it to the left side. Has some room. Lowers the shoulder and gets a first down. Good run by the senior quarterback, Justin Osterhaus. And, and this is what you see them do on film all year, and you would like to see them do it in the earlier series. They basically motion their tight end and bring some wide receivers and running backs into the fold so that they outnumber De La Salle in the box, and you see that there was some space to run there. Go back and do what got you here. A pickup of 13 to move the chains. They do it to the near side, and they give it. McDonald wants to throw, and he's got his man. Up close to the 45-yard line, connecting with Roman Brummel. Yeah, really good job of just switching it up here. Again, motioning to keep the, the defensive line off balance a little bit, and gets out this quick pass here. Uh, moving the chains, just getting some positive yards, getting some momentum, getting some confidence is so important, especially before the second half. Finding some things that work for you. I mean, that's part of the battle when you're getting blown out 35 nothing too. Helps to have two quarterbacks in there. Osterhaus with a give to Hartman. Can't find any running room up the middle. Mason Moragan in on the tackle. So how did Forest Hill Central get here? A comfortable win over Mona Shores in the district finals. A close win over East Lansing, and then they needed double overtime to beat a very good Dexter team. Huge snowstorm out there. Dexter versus Forest Hill Central definitely changed the dynamic of that game. Got to play through the elements. Flag on the play. Could be illegal motion against Forest Hill Central. If it is, it'd be their first penalty of the day. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense, number 14. Still second down. And we talked about the win over Mona Shores. Tim Rogers told us that's the turning point. And we had lost three or four to them. But they played great defense, ran the ball, very disciplined. How disciplined can they be here? Fumble! And it's recovered by Forest Hill Central. I think it was Jay Coe who jumped on at the center. And I think just going to the well one too many times, trying to get an outside jet sweep, uh, jet outside here, zip it through. He was going to pull that out, but pulled too late. Uh, he saw the quarterback there, Mason McDon or, excuse me, Justin Osterhaus, was going to go ahead and take that and run it. And he would have had some space to do so. Uh, just catches the hit there, and uh, unfortunately, almost a disaster for Forest Hill Central. Yeah, you go penalty, and then the near turnover, pushing you back to a third and 19 situation with about four minutes to go here in the opening half. Four wide receivers set. Osterhaus needs to throw. Down the middle of the field and incomplete. Intended for Hudkins. Good coverage by Kondiki Sherman Jr. Yeah, I thought they might might throw the flag on that one, but just really tight coverage. Did a good job. You can see Forest Hill Central wants to get it to their playmaker, and that's Ty Huckins. They're just not able to do it in the pass game. They need to look at a shorter pass game route, reverses, jet sweeps for him, and him touching the football because he's got that athleticism to hopefully break something and make it go. But again, the two previous plays puts him in a really tough spot in that regard, right? Third down and 19. Very predictable, and they're going to pin their ears back and get at the quarterback. Right, another oh, yeah. punt. Plenty of time for King. And space. And moves. Flag on the play. And still not down. Still pushing the pile. Inside the 30. 
waiting for a whistle, and it finally is blown at about the 28-yard line, but we'll see who the infraction is on. During the return, block in the back, number 31, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Yeah, I see here starting to move in, and, and really as a kick returner, you want to let everything flow to you and then get against the grain. Uh, don't get a, a real clear shot here, still looking. Yeah, happens in the back left, kind of off screen there. Uh, but still, you can see Coach Rowan very frustrated. Uh, yeah, they've had way more penalties than they probably typically had during the season, and he doesn't like seeing that even up 35 nothing. Really, the only thing they've done wrong here so far today. <laughs> Rozier. Lost it. Forest Hill Central immediately says they have it. We'll see how they unpile and who's got it at the bottom of that pile. It is Forest Hill Central, and it's the big play from Ty Hudkins. Yes, here, good job. He's being patient here, gets cleared out. You get one of the D linemen there just stripping the football. You work on that in practice, getting it out. Linebackers doing a good job of filling, creating a pile. And they much needed, uh, I think that's Max Richardson actually. He's all over the field. You watch film of this kid. He really jumps off the field number seven. Makes a really big play for a turnover. And Forest Hill Central has to get some momentum. Go capitalize. You're in the state championship. Let it all hang out. There's nothing to lose at this point. Richardson just a sophomore, but big play capability there. Puts his team good spot. Hudkins on the reverse. Good block from Osterhaus on the edge. That freed him up a little bit, and he scampers for a first down. And you're finding your mismatch. And maybe it's not a mismatch, but at least an athlete that can match the athleticism across from him. Go keep feeding the ball. Find creative ways to get it to him. And I think that some things started to open her up on the run game here earlier in the series, uh, the last series. But you see here just a good double reverse. Uh, you, you probably have a pass play out of that, but does a really good job, the quarterback there, Justin Osterhaus, of getting the block and freeing up for a first down. Osher has to throw on an out pattern. Hutkins, nice jab move. That's another first down for number five in green. Really good job of Forest Hill Central just taking what they give you. The safety is about 10 yards off. You've got the outside linebacker that's going to be responsible for that flat pass. He's not going to get there on an athlete like Ty Hutkins. Go back to it. Keep feeding it until they stop it. Good numbers for Ty Hutkins all season long. He can also run it. He's rushed for well over 150 yards this season. A great linear speed. Here's a first and 10 play for four still second. Osterhaus, hit as he throws, caught! Hits at the five, touchdown! That's a man who wanted it more, and Roman Brummel gets him on the board. Number eight, Justin Osterhaus, the baseball commit, just stays in there. He knows the pressure's coming. He knows he's going to get crushed, but puts it on an absolute line to number 14 for the big touchdown there. And you, this is exactly what Forest Hill Central needed. They can do it. Now they've proven to themselves they can do it. They can stick in there. And it's just millimeters, milliseconds that they need to make some big plays and get a big score before half. A two-point conversion attempt falls short off the fake extra point. You said it earlier. You're supposed to force turnovers if you're forced Hill Central against a team like De La Salle. You gotta force the turnovers, but you've gotta cash in off those turnovers. They did it here. 
and I, I, I don't know about the fake extra point right now. What's eight to seven? Just get your seven points, go in there, make the scoreboard look a little better, gain some confidence and go into the room. Don't do too much. Uh, not doing enough maybe got you in this position. Now don't go the other way and swing the pendulum. Make sure you just can really just bring your team together and understand, hey, one play at a time, it's a new half in the second half. Perhaps found a little bit of a recipe for some success on that last drive. Yeah, doing some things with their athletes. Ty Huckins, we talked about him earlier in the game, and he has some special ability. Uh, you know, really just making them guess and trying to outnumber the box as much as you can with tight ends and running backs. And if they can get back to that and what got them here, you know, hopefully they can try to claw their way back in the game. A little bit of a sigh of relief for Forest Hill Central, knowing that they could not just move the ball on De La Salle, but score. Now the question is, can they stop this high-octane De La Salle offense? That's the next question that needs to be answered. And if I'm Dan Roan and uh, Coach Abernathy and all the coaches over there uh, for De La Salle, I'm putting my foot on the gas. This is a state championship. Uh, I'm not playing uh, I'm not playing ginger. I'm, I'm going, going hard. Scooped inside the 10 by King. Tough to bring. Oh, and he got drilled right in the Adams apple at the 29-yard line. Huge hit from Nola, Nolan Hartle. Woo. And that's the type of play you want from your special teams, the most violent play in football, kickoff, kick return. It comes down there and just lays the wood here. Number 21, Forest Hill Central. That's a really good job. Again, those momentum, take those wins going into the second half. Now the defense will try and create a little momentum for itself. Out of first and 10, De La Salle has yet to be stopped. Their last drive, four plays, 35 yards. They did fumble on their last drive, but the last scoring drive needed just four plays. Drogosh on the run. Still on his feet and tripped up at the 38-yard line. Jacob Harleton dragged him down. And that, that offensive line from De La Salle, you know, the tackles, Nick Nielsen and Jacob Hoffman, the guards, Ryan Ross, Terrence Turner, just doing a really good job of getting their running backs and backs out. Rozier trying to bounce it to the outside. He's going backwards, still on his feet. Down he goes, fumble! And Grove Forest Hill Central's on it again! Nolan Hurdle. Again, why Forest Hill Central got here? It's 11 hats to the football. I don't care if we're down 35, 6, or 100 to nothing. We're going to run to the football, and great things happen. That's exactly Ryan Cargill, big middle linebacker, another guy that jumps off the field for Forest Hill Central over the season, makes a huge play. They bounce on it just after a big special teams hit there for big number 21, and now they have the ball in scoring position and really can put themselves in a really good spot here that we thought they weren't so much in about five minutes ago. So Hartle had the big hit on the special teams, as you Mentioned. Then he recovers the fumble, gets his team in good shape. At the 25-yard line of De La Salle. Osterhaus with a punt fake. Has a man! Touchdown! Hutkins! What an answer! We're going to see Ty Huckins at the top of the screen, does a little stutter step, stop and go, gets outside, out leverages the corner, and big touchdown for Forest Hill Central there before the half. They needed this so much. Special teams, defense, and offense all contributing to get them clawing back into this game. We're at the state championship, fellas. We leave it all out on the field and no regrets. That was a nice ball, wasn't it? A little pump fake and out and up by Hudkins. You said, get your playmaker the football. Forest Hills Central has back-to-back -back scoring drives because they have done just that. Ty Hudkins on the receiving end of the second touchdown pass of the day. 
from Justin Osterhaus. Yeah, again, just a really good job of the line. Offensive line just sticking in there. They're not getting a lot of pressure, but they see the one-on-one -on -one matchup. They like it. They know who their athlete is, and the wide receiver uh, just beats the DB, and the DB has to keep his eyes on the hips. He gets a little stutter step, comes up, loses his eyes on his man, and touchdown, play the band, strike the band, let's go. It was 35-0 De La Salle, and then back-to-back -back drives in which Forest Hill Central forced turnovers. Two fumble recoveries, two touchdowns, both of them through the air, and neither one of them took very long. Sam Rogers' team scored 51 seconds after the first turnover and then scored six seconds after the second fumble recovery. 13 points in just a minute and 38 seconds for Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central. And this is the next phase that they have to find a way to get a turnover or score special teams. This is going to be the way they claw back into this game. A line drive kick. Damian King the fourth. Slippery. And downed at the 44-yard line. Coming up at the half, we're going to introduce you to Royal Oak senior captain Ellie Finch and her incredible football career. We'll preview the upcoming Division VI state finals between Grand Rapids West Catholic and Nagani. Plus, Justin Sasante and I will break down the first half of play that started out in a rout by De La Salle, only to watch Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central force two fumbles. They recovered them both and scored on back-to-back -back recoveries. Buck and a half to go in the half. Chauncey Shaw is in the backfield. Drogos will throw. It is caught. Get out, get out, get out. There we go, Tristan Nichols, another catch. He has a touchdown catch so far today and picks up about nine on that throw. What a story Tristan Nichols is. He's the spark for the offense, according to Dan Rohn, but an All-State receiver a year ago. Many teams backed off him after he tore the ACL, but Saginaw Valley and Ferris State still wanted to come try and help their Division II programs in the GLIAC. Drogosh on a quarterback keeper. A draw that gets him outside the numbers, and he will jog out at the 36-yard line. Yeah, I really like this play here. You see Drodosh, and you see they're going to go and try to run the option, go ahead and run it. And you, you're going to see all the, the defense starts flowing that way and then hits a design run right back against the grain, a counter with the quarterback, and a uh, big play there by Drogosh, just really picking what he wants at, at, at certain points. Four wide receivers set for Drogosh, three of them to the wide side of the field. High snap, he handled it well. Throws on a line at the 20 yard line. A first down grab by Nichols. All the way to the 18 yard line. No panic for De La Salle. Plenty of time and three timeouts to boot. A pickup of 17 on that slingshot. Drogosh again with a keeper. Down to the 11 or 12 yard line. Gaudy numbers for Brady Gro Drogosh so far. Over 100 yards running and a couple of scores. Almost 200 yards through the air and a couple of TDs. Video game numbers, yeah, right? First carry for Chauncey Shaw. And he'll lose yardage. Lucas Force, the first one to meet him with Force. 
Yeah, you see Lucas Fors and those D tackles starting to get a little bit of energy in there, starting to get a little bit of motor, causing some disruption in the backfield. It's good to see for that momentum going into the second half. Timeout for De La Salle with 11 seconds remaining. Second down and three. Teams, players, and coaches work hard all week getting ready for the game. So do the officials. Local officials, meetings across the state every week help the men and women calling the action stay on top of their game. Let's give them the respect they deserve. Better yet, why don't you become one? Visit the MHSAA website for more information because without officials, it's just a practice. Tough to win when you're an official too. Somebody's gonna be upset one side or the other. And yet they do it with great integrity, especially in the state of Michigan. Well, what does De La Salle dial up here? There's plenty in that bag of tricks when you got number 12 at the helm. Well, you know, you, you're thinking they're doing a really good job running the ball with Drogosh right now, so why get overcomplicated? Or you go to some type of screen, you know, get something back towards the boundary that you can screen, pop it out real quick with a running back. Uh, they have a lot of confidence in their wide receivers uh, from the freshman uh, King to Tristan Nichols to Yanchik, so they could also take and exploit the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Last time they were down here, right around the nine, they threw a corner pattern for Nichols right there at the back pylon. He held it in for a score. Drogosh will throw. There's the setup. Left side, stiff arming and out of bounds. At about the seven yard line, Sharon Sutton on the receiving end of that pass. Took plenty of time off, just five seconds remain. So time for one more play for Dan Roan. Dan Roan just settling people down a little bit. <laughs> Love talking to him. He, he says, you know, we show a video of Rex Ryan, and he says, you know, we kind of bleep out the expletives, but it's talking about being number one and what it's like to be chased. You want to be number one. You want to be the hunted. It's kind of an honor to do just that. You know what that's like when you won your state championships. Everybody hunting you. Yeah, it was different from coming from a junior in 1997 saying we could be the worst team in Catholic Central history and then winning a state championship to doing it uh, ranked in the country. Uh, and, and it is, a, it's a different mentality and it takes a different focus and, and attention to detail because everybody's patting you on the back and it's really hard to keep that chip on your shoulder. Uh, but if you want to be one of the great teams and win back-to-back -back state championship, that's what you have to be able to develop and breed in your program. Well, their motto is never satisfied, and the seniors have dictated that theme. When you're a state champion and you've been here three years in a row, you can get fat and happy, but this team has not done that. And they sure haven't done it in the first half so far. Despite a couple of fumbles, they lead it 35-13 with another play to boot here. And they're looking for the kill shot here. Watch the, the linemen of the wide receivers looking to get out to the corner route of fades. Joe Gosh, and now a whistle. Another timeout. Joe Gosh doesn't look too happy. Timeout, De La Salle. He thinks he had what he wanted. We had shown you how these teams got here to Ford Field. It's much warmer for. Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central than it was last week against Dexter in the semifinals in double overtime. This is what it looked like. Ooh. Get the gloves on, break out a scarf, throw on a hat if you have to. That's chilly stuff. Showed an awful lot about what this team was capable of, winning in double overtime against a very good Dexter team. I think a lot of the people in the state wanted to see that matchup because of some of the athletes and talent Dexter had and how that would match up with De La Salle. But I think at this point, your defense and your interior line is going to really create the separation of who wins the state championship and who does it. Obviously, Forest Hill Central did a great job on the line, both sides of the ball last week to get themselves here. They're going to kick the field goal. That's the reason Dan Rohn took the timeout. He wanted more points, so Landon Riska is on to kick it on a 25-yard attempt. Out of the hold of Jack Yanichuk. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 
one second remains in the half. De La Salle wanted the points. They got the points. And it's now 38-13. Yeah, I think really smart decision. They have a really solid kicker. He's been consistent all year. Uh, gets the ball, gets the extra three points. You don't want to go for it, not get any points, kind of be deflated a little bit. Yeah, hey, they got th two touchdowns on us uh, late. Uh, we didn't get any points before half. They take the points. I think smart move by Coach Roan and his staff. And now you know why Brady Drogosh was a little disappointed at that last time out. He wanted another shot at the end zone, right? He didn't get it. He has to settle for three. And the lead now 25 for De La Salle. We will talk with Dan Roan heading in to the locker room, get his thoughts on what he liked about his team's first half. Guaranteed that he will be a little disappointed with the two fumbles and probably some of the penalties, right? Yeah, definitely. Knowing yeah. him the way you do. Yeah, the great ones are never satisfied, and he's definitely going to be unhappy about uh, where he thinks the team should actually be to where they are right now, even though looking from a uh, viewership, <laughs> they're doing just fine. Yeah. Gaudy numbers for De La Salle. Just a squib kick, and rightfully so. Still on his feet, and to the edge, but driven out of bounds. And that'll do it for the first half of play. Valiant effort by Sider Middaw, but couldn't do it. And De La Salle, the defending Division II state champions, lead at 38-13. Dan Roan might think, well, we stopped ourselves with those fumbles, but Forest Hills Central did a nice job of tackling the football, forcing those turnovers, and trying to make a game of it. De La Salle's offense, very, very impressive, Justin. And both teams really have to be able, they have to deal with the different motion roller, emotional roller coasters at half. So. Definitely want to see Forest Hill Central get some confidence, bring out some intensity, and, and De La Salle has to keep up uh, that same mind, uh, detail, attention, detail, focus as they come out in the second half so this game uh, isn't allowed to get back in hand for Forest Hill Central. It's a team that averages 43 points per game on the year. He's pretty close to that already. Dan Roan can feel pretty good about going to the locker room with a very hefty lead against a very game-competitive Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central team. And the head coach of De La Salle, Dan Roan, joins us here on Bally Sports with his team up big here in the first half of play with Justin Sasanti. I'm Matt Shepard. Dan, we appreciate it very much. Coach, thanks for the time. Um, look, your team looked really good offensively for the most part, but I know you're a coach that is never satisfied. What are your thoughts on the first half and what your team did? You know, I think we had a little lackadaisical there about the last four minutes of the half. And, you know, we, we fumbled the ball, and we kind of settled in a little bit, and I think we got ahead of ourselves. So, you know, those are things we can fix. Young kids are going to make some mistakes, big stages. And if we fix those things, come out and play pretty aggressive in the second half, I think we'll be okay. But, you know, you don't hate giving up quick, two quick scores like that. Coach Rowan, great job in the first half. Obviously, uh, I, I, you know, what are you telling your kids at halftime right now, being up big, uh, some of the guys maybe not on the, on the bench, not playing, and what type of mentality do you want them to approach the second half with? No, it's, approach it like it's a new game. I mean, this, th these guys came. They battled some football games, and they're a good football team. So they're not going to roll over, and that's been our preach all week, that this team's going to come in and play hard and play aggressive. So, you know, let's let's just finish our game. Let's play our football game. We know we got to kick to them to start the half. So if our defense can get a three and out and we can get back on offense and put some points on, maybe we can flip the script a little bit and get rolling a little aggressive. Coach, always enjoy our conversations. Thanks for the time. Good luck the second half. Appreciate it, guys. Take care. You bet. Dan Rohn, okay. the head coach of Warren D. LaSalle, his team. Comfortably in control, up 35-0 at one point before a couple of turnovers. Got Forest Hill Central back into it, and then they close it out with a field goal. 38-13, defending champs lead it by 25. Here at Ford Field, and here on Valley School. Three hundred and forty six total yards of offense for Warren De La Salle. They lead by twenty five here at the half of the Division two state championship game. Football and sports really are full of great stories. Ellie Finch is a perfect example of that. She is a senior at Royal Oak High School. She is a homecoming queen. This story is now about her wearing a crown. It's about her being the captain of the football team and chasing a dream in the game of football. 
Natalie Kerwin has more. Ellie, you are a girl that plays football. Yes. Do you hear that a lot? You don't know which way to go. You got to move the same. I do. I'm not the girl on the team. I'm not the female football player. I'm a football player. You got to find a way. And if the world should burn, I'll be hit every twist and turn. Yeah, I don't know which way I'm going, but I'm moving the same. So I knew since I was little that I wanted to play high school football. I mean, I went to most of the games. I, I don't know, I just, I thought they were the coolest people ever. Like coming out of the tunnel, coming out of the team room, like walking them out, watching them hold hands. I just thought like, that's like a family. That is football and that's what I want to be. And so my mom took me to, and my brother to a, a MSU like little camp like youth camp run by the players and the coach. You know, it really wasn't much, but it felt like that's where I was supposed to be. The rest is history. I mean, like, there's been ups and downs, obviously, but everything about it makes me love it more. Did you ever have any, I guess, doubters of you wanting to play? Oh yeah, but once people started telling me that I couldn't, or that I can't, or that I never will, it's like, well, now I have to. <laughs> um, not to say that I wasn't gonna do it anyway, but it's like, well, now there's even more reason to. I really don't understand why people doubt me or women or girls the way they do, because we're not different. Good. Obviously, I know that I'm making change and I love it, but I don't do it for that. I do it because I wanna, I wanna play football. And so sometimes when they ask like, oh, why are you playing or are you scared? I'm just like, well, would you ask that to any other person? <laughs> like, um, so it's just, yeah, sometimes it can definitely have like a negative connotation, but at the end of the day, it's like, okay, well, this is who I am, so. This is Ellie Finch? Yes. This is who you are? Yes. Well, you're out here playing on the offensive line. Yes. You're setting the tone too, obviously for your teammates too, voting you to be a senior captain. Yeah. What did that mean to you to kind of have that honor for this season? I, like, I knew they respected me, but to then have like that come out of it, I thought it was very cool. As much as like I don't care about the title or anything, it's like to be seen in that way is very, uh, very fulfilling. It's, I don't know, it's like it's empowering to know that like my team has my back with anything I do, and that they are looking up to me in that way because I don't always see myself like that. Um, and so it's like when I look back at them, I always know it's like, like I did it. <laughs> you spend all day with your teammates and as long as the days become, it's like, it's sad when they come to an end. Like football has my heart and it's, it's, it's the love of my life, and so when I'm playing football, I feel like me, and when I'm I guess also playing football, I feel home, and that's, that's a feeling I can't find from anything else. What message would you give other females that also want to get into male sports like football? Be yourself, that's definitely one thing. Like, never let fear, like, turn you away, and it's like, if you're not scared or just even a little bit afraid of your dreams, like you gotta dream bigger. And then obviously, you gotta prove people wrong. Good for Ellie. Don't ever let anyone tell you there's something you cannot do. She is getting looks at the collegiate level for track and field and rugby as well. But long-term goals are important and Ellie has set one very high. She wants to be a football coach in the NFL. Brady Drogosh would love to play in the NFL. We know he's going to play at Cincinnati next year, and so far, what has he done for De La Salle? Well, over 300 total yards, two rushing touchdowns, two passing scores. He's got the defending state champs up by 25 on Valley Sports at the break. Head coach Tim Rogers and Forest Hills Central have a motto this year, just prove it. They have something to prove in the second half. They're down 38-13.
here in Division II's championship tilt. Love what he told us earlier in the week, just he said, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who are humble will be exalted. His team has humbly gone about its business all season long at 13-0 entering play here today. They'll get the football to start the third. And this might be their offensive and defensive drives of the game. Hudkins cuts it up. Ty Hudkins still on his feet and wrestled down at the 31-yard line. Halftime highlights brought to you by Wallside Windows. Remember, De La Salle was up 35-0, and then Forest Hills Central's defense came to life. Yeah, did a, did a fantastic job. We talked about at the beginning of the game, they have to get some turnovers, and then you see they do that, and then they capitalize. That's a big point. They have to capitalize. They did so. Osterhaus to Brummel from 22 yards out. They force another fumble with a big hit. And then six seconds later, Osterhaus to Hutkins from 25 yards away on a pretty toss and a beautifully run route. Osterhaus remains in a quarterback because Forest Hill Central will play two quarterbacks. Osterhaus patiently feeling his way for a yard. Here's our halftime stats. De La Salle's offense, well over 300 yards. They were perfect on third downs, but the two turnovers really hurt them. Yeah, and if you're just looking at those stats, you see the total yards is the big difference there, and that's really telling the, the, the story offensively for De La Salle versus Forest Hill Central, and they have to start finding some more offense and be creative uh, getting it to their playmakers like Ty Huckins, Mason McDonald, Justin Osterhaus. Second and long for Forest Hill Central. Lofting near side and incomplete. Intended for JT Hartman who broke off his route. JT Hartman's been somebody who's really been the nucleus of the run game outside of the quarterbacks and haven't seen him get much going today. They need to find a way to get him downhill, get some easy yardage and set up some second and third and shorts. So third and long. If I'm here, I'm going to let them pin their ears back, and I'm going to throw a screen right over the top of their heads and try to get an easy Ooh, shot. Like That's that. what I'm doing right now. Great field position to accomplish that. All right, Coach, I like it a lot. Three wide receiver set. First time that Forest Hill Central has gone undefeated during the year at 13-0. Trying to cap it off with a comeback. Osterhaus has two men down there. Hutkins couldn't come back to the ball. And knocked down. Good coverage by Griffin Phillips. Yeah, Griffin Phillips, 39 tackles on the season, but a really good cover guy for them. That's their dependent guy. They're going to match him up against the top player on the opposite team of Forest Hill Central, Ty Huckins. You see he gets a little help there to slow him up, and then the safety gets over top and does a really good job there uh, just making a play on the ball. Again, I would have liked them to see some type of screen game, let them get upfield. They did a pretty predictable vertical pass there, and it got stopped. Fourth time today that Forest Hill Central has gone three and out against this De La Salle defense. Flag on the play. Out of bounds near the 35. We'll see what the call is first. Legal formation, kicking team. That penalty is declined. First down. De La Salle likes the field position. So you said perhaps the biggest series for Forest Hill Central. They go three and out. Definitely the biggest series for their defense. They can't afford De La Salle to score again. No, they cannot continue to go on this emotional roller coaster, and they're eventually going to run out of time. De La Salle scores again, second half, running clock. Going to have to really claw back in from there. And uh, this is, you know, a big big pinnacle uh, point, changing point of the game. 
60 yards to pay dirt for Brady Drogosh and the Pilots offense. <laughs> De La Salle 32 and 6 in their last 38 games. That is a dominant run. Drogosh wants to throw and connects. That's a first down toss to Damian King. Squeezed it inside the 40. That freshman has made a massive impact today. Uh, we've heard a lot about him, obviously, uh, just, just turning 15, and he's just very elusive <laughs> and athletic. Uh, they see they have very comfortable getting him the ball in space, and he's giving fits. And the DBs are really respecting him by playing him off so much, so they're not really using his size against him and being physical. Had, thir just, it had just 13 catches all year, Justin, and yet he has been the leading receiver for De La Salle today with six rocks already in the championship game. Drogosh carrying a man down to the 32-yard line. De La Salle with a big win over Birmingham Groves in the semis. They had a running clock in the second half, beating them 43-15. to 15. Beat Lance Cruz in the regional finals by a comfortable margin and did the same to Roseville in the district finals. Drogas throws again. That one is incomplete. Intended for Damian King. If you're Forest Hill Central, you want to start working that outside linebacker to get underneath that throw. We call it getting in the window so that the wide receiver is blocked uh, by the defensive player and it deters the quarterback from throwing that ball. It's also a way to get a good turnover. But you're starting to see they're starting to inch up a little bit and starting to put a little bit more pressure on the receiver instead of letting him run through. Might create a double move for De La Salle down the road here. Drogosh, look out! Splits a pair of defenders and drags him to the 10-yard line. He is an absolute load. Michael Campbell prevented another touchdown run for the senior quarterback from De La Salle. Yeah, and this is just too easy. This is a hat on hat up front. Uh, Drogas has great vision. He's going to find the hole, and he's going. And he's got really good acceleration and a long stride, so he's covering a lot more ground than you anticipate. Looks left. Throws left on a slip inside the 10. And Sharon Sutton is corralled there. Uh, we're looking at Ty Huckins again. We've been saying his name a whole lot. And you can see the fight in this young man. But comes from safety, runs the alley, and finds that rocket screen coming back downhill. And I like the way De La Salle designs it. It looks like a bubble first. Everybody gets flowing, and then they stick the foot and come back in. Really good job by Forest Hills Central from stopping that. Drogosh will keep it himself. To the edge. Touchdown. His third rushing touchdown of the day. So good, he's almost boring. All right. uh, we look at the left tackle here, and he just does a really good job of pulling here and just kicking out. They really have to start getting their linebackers flowing, and they have to seal the edge, and they just have not been able to do it against the run game, especially with the quarterback involved, and it's just killing Forest Hill Central. Landon Riska on for the extra point. He has been money today so far, and he continues to have himself a stellar afternoon. Brady Drogosh has been a man amongst boys. He makes it look easy. 152 yards on the ground and three touchdowns for the De La Salle quarterback. Nice route, nice job. Nice job, nice job, very good. Hey, Brady, do it with your eyes closed. All right, close your eyes. Come on, see it, see it. Oh! 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 Stop! Cut it! Cut, 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 cut! If you can do that with your eyes closed, how can they, how are they gonna stop you, man? Part of the Gardner Five and a reason why 
Brady Drogosh is in the discussion, Justin Sasante, for Mr. Football. Do you think he wins it? That's a really good group. I think that, uh, you know, depending on what happens tomorrow with Mason McKenzie, uh, Caledonia versus Belleville, he could have a great statement in that game, and he's an extremely talented quarterback, very similar to what Brady Drogosh is, can run and throw the football tremendously well. So three quarterbacks in the finals for Mr. Football. We will see that Caledonia team against Belleville tomorrow right around 1 o'clock in the Division I state championship here on Valley Sports. In the meantime, Drogosh has been unstoppable today. Touchdown runs today of three yards and two yards and nine yards. He also has two touchdown passes. And tremendous job by that offensive line from DLSL. Probably don't get enough credit during the year because of all the great athletes, but Brendan Diggin, Ryan Ross, Terrence Turner, Jacob Hoffman, Nick Nielsen, great job. Young men opening up holes. That will come out to the 20 because it was a touchback. And now De La Salle's defense takes the field against a Forest Hills Central offense that needs to get in gear. Tough to do it against James McDonald and the De La Salle defense. McDonald is an inspiring story. He's their physical leader, 115 tackles on the year. But last Saturday could not ride with the team on the team bus to the game against Groves and Troy because he was a pallbearer at his grandfather's funeral. At 10.30, his grandfather was put to rest, and McDonald had to meet the team for a 1 o'clock kick. He was there and played as usual at a high level and with great inspiration. There's a seam route just off the hands of Max Richardson. That was open. Yeah, if he catches that, he, he may be gone. We, he may be still running. Uh, they just cannot have those miscues this late in the game with the score the way it is. They need to find a way to make those plays, hit the hands, catch the ball, and uh, Max Richardson usually does. Tim Rogers wishes his team had that one back at second and 10. Justin Osterhaus will throw. Another seam route. Richardson, the intended target, a little long. Third and ten. Yeah, simply went back to the same play from the right side to the left side. But again, the times that he sticks in there and takes a hit, holds onto the ball a millisecond longer, he's finding success. When he's getting it out too quick, it's just not the time. He's just not right. Maybe, maybe some of that has to do with the pressure that De LaSalle has been able to apply so far here today. Sets up a screen, and that is off the fingertips and incomplete. Yeah, we talked about this earlier. It's probably a great time to run a screen in your own territory. You got the airs pinned back from the defensive lineman, but you just see it. Smell a skunk in the woodshed. That's what Coach Dudas <laughs> used to say, old coach at Detroit Catholic Central. You smell the skunk in the woodshed. He tracks the lineman. There's something up, and they blow the play up. Good job by De LaSalle and their defensive squad. Yeah, they smelled it, that's for sure. <laughs> Twin safeties back to receive this punt. It's a line drive kick that goes out of bounds. In Forest Hills Central Territory, they will mark it at the 45-yard line. Now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Returning AZ Plan lessees can order an F-150 today and lease it for $2.99 a month for 24 months. Only at your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. Seven touchdowns and a field goal for Brady Drogosh and the defending state champion Warren De La Salle Pilots. In front by 32. 35 gives you a running clock in high school football in the second half. Drogosh in complete command of this De La Salle offense. And you can tell his man is wide open. He will waltz his way into the end zone for six more. Jack Janacek with his second receiving touchdown of the day. And it's official. Although there is a flag on the play, if it stands, it's officially a blowout.
Illegal substitution on the offense, number 22. Replay first down. No wonder Janicek was wide open. Yeah, either a broken coverage or they run on Janicek late, but Janicek's one of the top receivers, and he's just not covered. That's as easy as it gets, A to B. Uh, but Forest Hill Central gets lucky there with that legal substitution. Gets a second chance to, to stop the Warren V. LaSalle potent offense. Nose of the football to 50. On a first and 15 for De La Salle. Rhett Rozier up the middle. Plows forward close to the 45. Really like to see Forest Hill Central start bringing some games inside, start bringing some pressure from the edge, start bringing some pressure from the middle, make De La Salle move a little bit. They're just not making a move enough. When they want to pass, they sit back here untouched. Second and 11 for Drogosh and Warren De La Salle. High snap, handles it, no problem. A swing pass that'll get a first down and more. Aaron White with his first catch of the day. A pickup of 16. And yeah, they're just simply outflanking the defense. If you don't have people pressed up into the offensive wide receivers' faces and or linebackers that have some type of alignment that takes away those bubbles, they're going to keep throwing them and keep getting their athletes in space. And that's what they've been doing all day and find a great success at it. Yeah, timeout for Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central, trying their best to regroup. They have watched De La Salle's offense put it in high gear and keep it there all day long. Warren De La Salle has nine three-year varsity players. That helps them. It's a team that has plenty from which to choose out of the Central Division in the Catholic League, four football championships, former Red Wing Danny DeKaiser, former Tiger Alex Avila went to school there. They lost in week four by just a point, and since that time have really become refocused. Dan Roan says losing that game to Brother Rice we really understand what never satisfied means. And now you've got to live that motto. And they've lived it to its full potential the rest of the way and so far here today. First and 10 for them at the 30 of Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central. Drogosh still throwing. On a nice screen right side. Inside the 20, Tristan Nichols with another grab. He's had a nice ball game. It's a great story. Yeah, and I really like watching the wide receivers of De La Salle. They take a lot of pride in their stalk blocking. When you start getting these bubble rocket jailbreak screens, the space, the, we consider them just long handoffs. Uh, getting it out to your playmakers there, but you're seeing a really good block there on the edge uh, on number four of the Forest Hills uh, central defender and uh, gets another really good play for a first down. Nichols picked up 11 on his fifth catch of the day. On a torn ACL. On a torn ACL. He'll have surgery on Monday. Doctors cleared him to play, saying you can't do a whole lot more damage with it. And yet, he has played at such a high level since. Nice shake inside the five. Touchdown, De La Salle. Rhett Rozier, his second touchdown run of the day. Yeah, great job. Uh, look, Brendan Dig. Brendan, Brendan digging right here, uh, and, and, and you guys got the left, right guard there. They're just doing a phenomenal job of getting bodies and just swallowing people up. You get the double team, really good cut from the big boy, Rhett Rozier. He's a bulldozer, but he has a little shimmy shake and gets home and really puts a nail into what's going on here with Forest Hill Central, trying to climb back into the state championship final. Had one from three yards out earlier. This one, a plunge from 19 yards away. 51-13, De La Salle. Make it 52 with the extra point. Sure, they may have fumbled a couple of times, but De La Salle's offense has been in overdrive all day long. Tough to stop this type of pressure. 
Yeah, really good job. Look at the, look at the big hole opened up. Look at good footwork, vision. Always working your hips and feet downhill. And another great touchdown shows why De La Salle is ranked where they're ranked and going to uh, potentially get their second state championship in two years. Some argue that they might be the best team in the entire state despite the division. Now that they're up more than 35, that means a running continuous clock, except during a timeout, an injury, a penalty, or a score here in the second half. And they really go through the gauntlet too. I mean, the, the amount of competition that they have for the year, it's not only impressive that they they win the games, but that they are able to stay healthy. And I'm still amazed shut by the fact that Tristan Nichols has a torn ACL and playing wide receiver in this game. It's not a lineman. Uh, I had torn two torn ACLs and I could not imagine running routes with them. I can't even run to the fridge now, so I <laughs> <laughs> with or without the I just, ACL. I just have someone to get whatever I need, right? <laughs> well, it is a De La Salle team. We mentioned the one loss in, in week four, but they played a, another close game against River Rouge, second to last regular season game. It went down to the wire, and De La Salle was able to beat River Rouge by a point, 19-18. So they've been tested a little bit, but in the playoffs, not at all. And not necessarily here today either. Flag on the play because that kickoff went out of bounds. Again, the running clock will take place for Forest Hills Central because of the lead that De La Salle has. And the only way to stop it is during a timeout, an injury, and after a score or Kick to out of bounds. a penalty. Kicking team. Forest Hills is elected to put the ball in play at the succeeding spot. First down. So they'll take over at the 35-yard line. So JT Hartman's had a great year there for Forest Hills Central at running back. I'd like to see them get him going a little bit. You know, just stop the bleeding and start controlling the football and try to find some momentum and hold on to this ball a little bit. Time of possession is key so this game doesn't get further out of hand. Big reason for the success for Tim Time Rogers out. this Forest year Hills. has been uh, the not about me, the unselfishness attitude that his team has on a pretty regular basis. And he tells them to do something that they would do, and then he gets no resistance from these kids. And and that's it. That's kind of refreshing in, in today's day and age when a lot of things are being questioned by whether it be authoritative figures or coaches. He runs a program at Forest Hill Central where the kids are like, you bet, what else do you need? And that's made it really easy for him and his coaching staff. So congratulations to them on a fine season. Yeah, and look, we, we all want to win. We all want state championships. We all want rings. But at the end of the day, your success this year and that that culture, yes, sir, no, sir, and that everybody is moving in the right direction, a synergy, especially in this culture with our youth, how torn they are to be individuals. It, it's special to see, and that culture is going to last in Forest Hill Central for a long time. They brought in a, a Navy Special Forces in the offseason to teach their kids about being, un, being comfortable with the uncomfortable. And it's rather uncomfortable right now as they go to work with their offense. Again, a running clock in play. Mason McDonald on the carry, he picked up seven. Yeah, and Mason McDonald and, and Justin Osterhaus, they, they look similar, so it doesn't seem like you have to change your play up dramatically, but uh, you also wonder, does that cause some confusion for the kids as you have this rotating quarterback system? Well, these are important snaps for this junior who will be leading this team next year. Mason McDonald hands off to JT Hartman, another junior who will be back for this team, helping their ground attack. And a couple of offensive linemen who will be back. But it's tough to replace certain players, especially 55 in green, Crandall Quinn off to the University of Michigan to play lacrosse. But uh, despite, you know, not everybody can win, but despite the, the disappointment here today, they've accomplished a great deal in their school's history. On the keeper, McDonald lowers the shoulder and gets into De La Salle territory. 
I think one of the more surprising things is that this is a Forest Hills Central team that, that reaches the finals. One of five teams from the OK Conference to play at Ford Field this weekend. That ties the 2002 record when five went to the dome for most from the conference ever advancing the championship. Second down at six. Off play action, pressure comes, and incomplete. Who else but Mason Moragan with the pressure? And Mason Moragan, just seeing him play a lot, he's just so long, and he's also savvy. He knows the game. He knows when he's getting tricked into overflowing or getting uh, to different ways. So you see him, big, long, Division One Illinois commit, and just sees that tackle block down, comes right off the butt, but doesn't crash so much that he can't keep contain on the quarterback. Just a really good job by that young man. Again, 30 tackles for loss and 15 sacks on the season. Just That's unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah, those are crazy numbers. Yeah, entering today and in his career, 69 tackles for losses, 30 sacks in his career. Again, headed to Illinois to play football in the Big Ten. Start eating that dorm food, that 240 will go to 260 pretty quick, won't it? No doubt about it. <laughs> uh, you're seeing a really good job. We haven't mentioned them enough, I think, today is the De La Salle defensive line. Uh, they're just really in there being stopped. They can't be moved. They got these great edge rushers. The linebackers fill really hard. It's just really difficult to do anything inside the tackles against De La Salle, and it's been all year. This is a fourth down and seven for Forest Hill Central. McDonald rolls and a throwback. Hartman's there, but so is a couple of De La Salle pilot defenders, including James McDonald and Max Tamaris. Yeah, the one thing that you just don't give enough credit for in high school football, it's just like college football in the NFL now. There's so much film being watched, and you've seen Forest Hill Central do this in multiple games during the season. You know De La Salle is well prepared for it. Again, smelling that skunk in the woodshed. You see everything get vacate, know what's up, and retract on the lineman's hips, and you go there and find the football and make a play. Lucky that wasn't intercepted. Brady Drogosh stays in the game. He's surprised here. Two and a half left to go in the third and the game in hand. I think you're letting your senior uh, take care of the ball and get as much of his last high school football game as possible. Chancey Shaw. Second carry of the day for the senior, number 23 in white. A lot of winning done at De La Salle. Defending state champions in hoops, defending state champions in football, and now Tristan Nichols is done. Big embrace from Dan Roan and the coaches appreciating what this senior has gone through this year and what he's given to the program. Yeah, it just shows how selfless he is playing on an injury like that. Chauncey Shaw spins out of a would-be tackle. Still on his feet, lost the football. LaSalle got it back. Dante Pancato jumped all over it. Yeah, real good uh, spin move here. Just, you know, and Ryan Cardwell, he's been a playmaker for them all year. But you see that Forest Hill Central has no quit in them. They are still running to the football. They're still trying to make plays, and they're going to leave it all out in the field and have no regrets uh, of, of at least their, their efforts here today uh, in the Division II State Championship. Good shot of Pancato, an only two-year starter on that offensive line. Throw and connection to the 35-yard line for... P.B. Robbie, the junior, with his sixth catch of the year. One more play before the quarter ends. Drogosh slings it wide side of the field. Not much there for Jack Janicek. 
And that'll do it for three quarters of play here in the Division II State Championship. De La Salle, the defending champion. They know what it takes to win a crown. They also know the heartbreak of losing one. They have put all that experience on display here today. Their offense has been incredible. Their defense has been stingy. And they lead it 52-13 as we head down the stretch at Ford Field on Valley Sports. This special presentation of the MHSAA Football Finals on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by Figer Law. Nobody knows the law like we do, Figer Law. And by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. What a beautiful shot of our great city. Ford Field, the site of the state championships, as it always has been and always should play, should be. Big place for De La Salle. Justin Sasante has really led the pilots to this huge lead. It's Menard's big money moment. Yeah, just nonstop uh, field general leading the charge. We talked about in the beginning of the broadcast that Brady, uh, everything that De La Salle is going to do offensively is going to go through Brady Drogosh, Division One Cincinnati commit, and he is uh, everything is advertised. He's been doing this consistently for the last two years. Uh, that experience as a sophomore losing the state championship, and then see his big fellows up front just opening up holes. Anytime they needed to go back to the run game with him or Rhett Roser, they were getting and finding great success and opening up huge holes. You have to be happy if you're Coach Roan and that De La Salle staff of how they've responded up front and dominated the line of scrimmage. Almost 400 total yards of offense from the senior quarterback, Brady Drogos. He has rushed for three touchdowns, thrown for two more and making a statement for Mr. Football. Some seniors being pulled off the field. A nice gesture on the part of Dan Rowan. Shaw, jitterbug moves. Ended up losing a couple. Ty Hudkins wrapped him up. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, it's good to get some of these younger guys experience, not only to say, hey, we played in the state championship, but know how it feels because you want to get back here. And that is invaluable experience for those younger guys to just experience the lights, to experience uh, everything that goes around, not, not only the preparation of the state championship game, but playing in it. What a feeling that must be. Drogosh looks left, fires, and it's caught. Outside the numbers and then driven backwards, Damian King. You'll hear a lot about that young man. He has been big here on the biggest stage today. And the freshman has plenty of time left to make his mark at De La Salle. He had about five touchdowns in, in the playoffs alone, and, and you can just see the way that he moves and his quickness is God-given. He has a lot of shake, has a lot of ability. As he puts on some size, he's going to be a factor, not only in the Catholic League, but the state of Michigan. Drogosh's day and career at De La Salle ends with an exclamation point. He is done. Dan Rohn took the time out to see how much his teammates truly appreciate and love him. Well, that, that gives you goosebumps right there. And when everybody comes over to hug him and say thank you, what a ride it has been. Friends for life and something no one can ever duplicate. You can be a good friend of his, but when you're a good friend and a teammate, that's tough to duplicate. Yeah, and this football fraternity is special, and we've been around it so long. But when your teammates have a great respect and love for you, it just is different. It, it, it doesn't matter what the coaches think sometimes. It doesn't matter what the outside people think. When your guys know you'll go to battle for them and you'll lead them into 20 guys in an alley, whatever it has to be to get the job done, that's Brady Drogosh, and he deserves that send-off. And uh, very proud of him and what he's done in the state of Michigan and for football for the deal to sell. He'll get a chance to keep playing the game he loves at Cincinnati, but there's some of his teammates who won't, and he knows how much this means to them as well. Dylan Trundle, the junior quarterback, is in now for De La Salle, wearing 10 and white. Slips his way. And that's a nice way to make an audition here in the state finals. 
Time now for tonight's player of the game, brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Brady Drogosh will get a lot of credit to his offensive line and for good reason, but those numbers cannot be denied. No, it's unbelievable. And the accuracy that he has thrown with, even with the long bubbles and screens, he's been on point all day and then took his shots when he had to and then ran the football behind that big physical offensive line. Just tremendous one-two punch there uh, coming from the, the quarterback and the offensive dealer. So. The handoff going and up to the 15 yard line. Colin DeHunt with the carry. These juniors have some big shoes to fill. <laughs> they got a heck of a tradition to try and uphold. Take Gasparini in a quarterback and inside give a big hit at about the 12 yard line to drive the ball carrier back. Here are some of the best quarterbacks the state has to offer this season. We've seen Brady Drogosh. We will see Dante Moore. We will also see Mason McKenzie and Bryce Underwood. CJ Carr was knocked out earlier this year, headed to Notre Dame. The state of Michigan is starting to churn them out. Pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, Christian Johnson will be playing in the senior all-star game. Had some injuries this year. Going to my alma mater, GBSU. We'll be able to see Dante Moore, uh, Bryce Underwood, and, and Mason McKenzie head-to-head, -head, which I'm very excited about. I think Mason McKenzie is very underrated. And Bryce Underwood and all the adversity you're going through, regardless of your opinion on what's going on, you don't want to see these young men suffer. And you want to see that work put in that it, it actually comes to happen. And I'm looking forward to that great battle there between those two quarterbacks up for Mr. Football. That Parker Pico uh, graphic that you saw there is part of it, uh, is going to Alabama but to play baseball. He's a heck of an athlete. Incredible quarterback for sure, but an even better baseball player. And that's where he's going. He's going to play for the Crimson Tide on the baseball route. Yeah, ran the football very well. And then that Rochester Adams team got beat twice by Clarkston this year, which I was uh, surprised. It's hard to beat a team twice in, in any season. Uh, but yeah, some really good quarterbacks and development in the state of Michigan and the Midwest has changed uh, dr dramatically over the last decade. And you can see it by the, the type of student athletes we're putting out uh, from the state. Noah Poldink in at quarterback and an inside give. And just shy of another touchdown. Michael Walker was pretty close to scoring yet another touchdown for Dean LaSalle. It's 52 13. Holding with an inside give. Not yet. Colin DeHunt came close, pushed backwards by Max Richardson. Chef, I've been in this position as a coach. I've taken some bad losses in the state championship as assistant football coach. You have to really learn from this experience. You have to really preach to your program that you guys are going to bounce back, that you got to learn from your failures. Failure is the mother of all success. So Forest Hill Central, they, they, they can't leave this. I, I understand it didn't go how the way they wanted to, uh, but they got very far. They've made their community very proud, and they continue to play hard and leave it all out on the field, and that's a lot of respect for them. D Rossell has one slipped through his hands, and he'll fall on it at the 20-yard line. Well, Warren De LaSalle doesn't have a problem with the number of players showing up for their off-season workouts and wanting to play football for Dan Rohn. Over 125 on the roster, top to bottom. And you could tell the guys he brought up from the freshman in the JV, they don't have the same color numbers. The yellow numbers on the jersey are the varsity players all season long. The purple numbers are those players who are elevated for the playoffs. Rossell being one of them in a queue on a fourth down play. The handoff. 
dropped. Stopped by Forest Hill Central. Max Richardson giving it back to his offense in a 52-13 ball game. It's been a fun season for De La Salle, but they also play this game with a very heavy heart because their former teammate, Evan Valencourt, member of the class of 2019 and a two-time state champion, passed away in the middle of this month. He was an active duty, and he was an inspiration to everybody in the De La Salle community. Great character. They have great respect for him, and the respect is evident on the decals that they wear on their helmets here today. You know, Dan Roan did not coach Evan Valancourt, but he heard stories about it, and he said, this is the least we can do, is make sure we honor him on a state championship Friday morning slash afternoon. Forest Hills Central on the ground with Ty Hudkins. Under five minutes left in this one. Celebration continues on the De La Salle sideline. It's been a dominating performance, hasn't it, Justin? Yeah, it just has. And, uh, you know, a lot of people expected them to come in and dominate this yeah. game. I think yeah. watching film over the, the weeks here at Forest Hill Central, uh, thought it would be a little bit closer. I just think some things uh, did not go their way. And then, again, the dominance on, on the line of scrimmage. It, it always starts up front with football. It starts with great defense and how your line's going to play. And De La Salle's line has just been dominant. Mason McDonald, the trigger for Forest Hill Central. And they give to JT Hartman. Tough sled there. You know, th these two coaches do have a, a little bit of a history together because of the time that Dan Roan spent on the west side of the state. So they clashed before, and they knew each other was going to play really hard. But Dan Roan loves playing teams on the west side because he's from there. He's got a cottage in the spring and out on the lake, so he bumps into a lot of people. Three years ago, when his team lost to Mona Shores, Dan Roan was uh, playing in an off-season golf outing at Muskegon Country Club. His caddy that day was Mona Shores quarterback Brady Rose. Great one. Yeah. And Dan Roan kind of shook his head. They talked a lot about football. They talked a lot about that game. They talked about Brady Rose going to Ferris State, where he plays now. Uh, it was it was a great moment for uh, Dan Roan at the time meeting a kid who was as gutsy a kid as you've ever seen play the game of football in this state. Uh, I watched him play in a semifinal uh, one year and uh, how he took over the game and just willed the way in his size. He's not a, uh, a, a tall or big guy, but a tremendous football player. And uh, no, that's a that's a really neat story. And they played Muskegon earlier this year as well out at Muskegon, yep. I believe. Uh, or at Lawrence Tech, excuse me, uh, which, you know, again, iron sharpens iron. Put, put the best on your schedule, and Muskegon will be playing for the state championship tomorrow against Martin Luther King. Hartman on the edge and dropped out of bounds. The clock continues to wind. Two and a half left. I get 2.32 as they step. But with it, Dan Roan, of course, has plenty of lineage in the great state of Michigan, and has won state championships at West Catholic when he was there. Spent nine years at Fremont, was an assistant penalty. at Ferris the State, the end of the run. and won First some down. state championships at West Catholic in 2010, 13, 14, and 15. He was there from 1999 to 2019, came over to De La Salle. So the history is definitely there. The familiarity with the west side of the state is there. And of course, West Catholic will play next here on Valley Sports against Nagani. My good friend Darren Smith, uh, alumni of Grand Valley, played on the national championship team as a corner, is the defensive coordinator for West Catholic. Caleb Hauser coaches offense. Wish those guys good luck. Wish all teams involved good luck for this weekend. Be a good broadcast here on Valley Sports. Our friends Dan Dickerson and John Wangler with a call of that state championship matchup. They approach the two minute mark. You know the head coach is breathing easy when he's no longer front and center on the sideline and he's way in the back hugging and congratulating all the people behind the scenes 
who have helped his team to have such great success this year and don't always get the accolades. I think for Forest Hill Central, the, the positive part of this, you got a lot of juniors part of this team, the Hutskins, the Hartmans, you have uh, Joey Wing, uh, that's an offensive uh, lineman. Uh, you got Jay Coe as the center. So Mason got McDonald, guys, the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. You Mason McDonald. You got guys, guys coming back and they're, they're reload and uh, you've been here now uh, for the first time in was 28 years, Shep, and uh, you know, see if you can get back here and learn, learn from this experience. Yeah, it's been a fun ride. They've, they've always, Tim Rogers says, love the underdog role. Uh, they were a heavy underdog today, and uh, just too much strength, speed, and talent on that De La Salle side of the football, especially on the offensive side. And just to allude to something you said earlier is, you know, it, it, no matter how much talent you have, you still have to have good coaching, great engagement. You have to build young men. You have to have people that are willing to put in. You have right. to watch film. You have to do all these little things. And, all of that is really unseen by the public, right? All the work that these teams put in and how hard it is uh, to go through 16, 17 weeks of football season, yeah. including camp. You know, so hats off to everybody in the state of Michigan, all the coaches, uh, all the players, all the families that support. This is just a, a wonderful game. Not a, There's not a better game to build young men, and uh, football is it. And, uh, just a hats off to both communities uh, for getting this far and, and, and to this special day. Yeah, well, Tim Rogers said, you know, getting here is validation that they've been doing things the right way, teaching life lessons. But the lesson today was being taught by De La Salle. Too much power for the defending champs. They celebrate a second consecutive title. Dan Roan and the Pilots rule the day in Division II. Last year, en route to their title, they gave up just 14 points to Traverse City Central. This year, they give up just 13 to Forest Hills Central. And Warren De La Salle, crown champion in 2022, a second in a row for them. Yeah, congratulations to De La Salle. Congratulations to both communities to making it this far, and staffs, uh, players, and, and families, especially around the Thanksgiving holiday. It's a special experience, regardless of the outcome. And De La Salle, uh, they've been at the top of their game in the Catholic League and now the state of Michigan, and uh, congratulations, hats off to their efforts. Over 400 yards of total offense for Warren De La Salle, led by one of the best players in the state of Michigan. We'll wrap it up when we come back to Ford Field in a moment. Dan Roan and De La Salle say their process is about having a game plan, that they want to win state titles. They won another one here today. They're second in a row and the fifth in Warren De La Salle history. They left no doubt who the best team in Division II was in a 52-13 runaway win over Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central. For my partner Justin Sasante and our entire Valley Sports Detroit crew, I'm Matt Shepard. Thanks a lot for joining us. Coming up next, Dan Dickerson and John Wangler have the call of the Division VI State Championship game featuring Nagani and Grand Rapids West Catholic. Valley Sports Detroit is your home for the MHSAA Football Finals. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day.